your Bible is open to Matthew chapter 1. The gospel according to Matthew. Matthew's gospel chapter 1. We'll read starting at verse number 18. Matthew's gospel chapter 1. Starting at verse Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she will bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin said, be with child, shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. Verse number 20 of our text says, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And I want to preach today. Don't be afraid to open God's gift. Don't be afraid. You may be seated. To open God's gifts. Don't be afraid. To open God's gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, as believers, when we think of Christmas, aside from our family gatherings, gift giving, and receiving, the smell of that meal that we look forward to eating, we should also remember our Lord's entrance into the world. That the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the mighty God, would step down from eternity, down into time, wrap himself in flesh that he acquired from the dressing room of Mary's womb, and dwell amongst men it is cause for even the angels to celebrate the glory and the goodness of God. And because of his great gift that God has given us, we celebrate the gift of Jesus, which is ultimately the gift of eternal life. Without him coming into the world, Without him taking on human form and becoming kin to me, he could not redeem me. 
All of my sins are eradicated in the presence of Jesus Christ. Because wherever Jesus is, deliverance is bound to happen. And for this, we celebrate. Come on, clap your hands. We celebrate his entrance into the world. In all of the wonderful things that we do to commemorate the birth of our Lord and Savior, be careful. Be careful to understand that the first Christmas, the first Christmas was not quite as beautiful as the ones that we see today. And in reality, most times with the gifts God gives us, we have joy in retrospect as we look back and see that his plans were better than our plans and I want to warn you my brothers and sisters that initially when God gives you a gift it does not always bring joy and praise it often causes conflict and then you begin to wonder in your mind whether this gift is from God or is this a plot of the enemy to destroy me? You would think that Joseph would have been filled with excitement about the birth of Jesus. That God had chosen the same woman that Joseph had chosen. The fact that God had selected Mary should have eased his mind. But sometimes being selected by God and receiving gifts from God can leave you in disarray. Come closer. And so in this text, when we see Joseph, we don't see him dancing and celebrating. We see him worried and upset. Because generally when God gives a gift, it often worries you before it blesses you. Oh God. Oh thank you Jesus. I really couldn't park right there. But at the time that Joseph leaps on the pages of this text, He's not trying to find a way to get closer to the baby Jesus or Mary who is pregnant with him. No, he's actually trying to figure out how can I get out of this? <laughs> Just as quietly and calmly as possible without drawing attention to myself. Just show me the door so that I can exit and get away from this gift. And many times when God gives you a gift, instead of running towards it, our propensity is to run away from it. After all, who knows what's in a gift given until it's unwrapped. Perhaps it's not so much the gift that I want to warn you about. Because ultimately, all gifts from God will pay off in the end. So maybe I shouldn't sound the alarm about the gift. But instead, I want to draw your attention to the wrapping. Because God's greatest gifts are often wrapped in problems. God's greatest gifts are often wrapped in anxiety, in worry. God's greatest gifts often come to us camouflaged in messed up situations that seem insurmountable. Great gifts can come wrapped up in a 
a financial struggle. Great gifts can come wrapped up in a package and somebody who you thought would be there walked away and left you. Hmm. In fact, God can give you a gift and you not feel gifted. And many have discovered that there are times that God gives you a gift and people are not even happy for you. That's right. That's right. They don't celebrate the gift that God has given you, but instead they often come to kill the gift that God has given you. And I suggest that we extract the word of wisdom from the illustration of the birth of Jesus that we can use against the challenges that we face today. It's what makes our faith vibrant. It makes our faith relative. It makes our faith effective. And the first thing that the angel says to Joseph is do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And why does the angel say this? Uh, he says it because fear can paralyze your faith. Hallelujah. Somebody shout out loud, fear not. Fear, not. Mm. fear can limit your perspective. Fear can intimidate you from growth. Fear can make you give up on something prematurely. Not recognize that God is not through working his miracle in the gift that he's given you. Fear can make you give up on something that God is going to use to bless you. Fear can make you try to put away, as Joseph did, the only redemption that God gave to him. He was about to give it away because of fear. And we must be careful that we do not let fear Rob us of God's gift. Can I tell you that again? Be careful not to let fear rob us of God's gift. And when I look in the text this time, I see that fear can come on us when we face new jobs. New relationships, new children, new opportunities, new obstacles, and even new enemies. It can all be gifts from God. And I know that you're used to the gifts that come wrapped up in beautiful packages, but God doesn't always wrap his gifts that way. And what I discovered is that Joseph had to deal with fear of perception. The fear of perception. The fear of perception. What will people think? What will people say? And often when God gives you a gift, it causes you to become controversial in the eyes of people. And if you were not so gifted, you wouldn't be so hated. And if you notice in our society, we very seldom waste hate on people who are not gifted. Come closer. And if you understand it correctly, it is a privilege to be hated for his name's sake. It's an honor to be selected that somebody has set out a decree to destroy you. And it's only because you are 
gift. And even if there's not a gift under the tree for you, you are gifted with life. A reasonable portion of health and strength. You are gifted with new ideas. You are gifted with ambition. You are gifted with integrity. You are gifted. And so today I want to encourage you to shake off the fear of perception. Because in this new year, if you can shake this off, you're going to be prepared to receive the abundance that God has. And I got something to tell you. There's something coming in this new year that will justify everything that you've been through this year. Oh God, it is. But you can't receive it if you're more concerned with perception than you are with the receiving the power that God has given you. Don't be afraid to open up God's gift. And I also need to warn you of the fear of provisions. Can I afford it? Can I afford it? Do I have what it takes to maintain this blessing? Have you ever been in an upscale establishment and someone peered over the menu and said, have you seen these prices? And if you're like me, you get a little bit frustrated because you didn't go to worry about how much it costs. You were there to enjoy the meal. So be careful that God will take you to a place of blessings. And you're so worried about how much it costs that you don't enjoy it. See, all the 12 people call it that. Because you expected to do things on a higher level. And I'm not trying to tell you, I'm not trying to tell you that Joseph didn't have resources. Watch the text. Obviously, he had resources because as they traveled, he wasn't looking for benevolence. He wasn't begging nobody. He was looking for a hotel. And can I tell you, you don't look for a hotel if you don't have money. But when you are dealing with provisions, we must understand that sometimes we need provisions that money cannot buy. Joseph had money, but the ends were all filled. And isn't it a frustrating thing that by the time you realize the money that you need for the places that you need to go, and suddenly you find out that money is not the only provision that you need. Hmm. In other words, I'm trying to tell somebody that God can give you something that money cannot buy. I feel like that. I'm telling somebody that God is going to give you something that your money cannot buy. I found one person. I said, God is getting ready to give you something. I found somebody that money cannot buy. I found you back there. I said, God is getting ready. To give you something, yeah. you give you something that money cannot buy. Don't be afraid. Fear not. 
God has the provisions covered. He already has a place prepared uh -oh, I found it. for you. He already has it set up for you. And when people shut the door on you, it's only a sign that God is about to open up another door in your life. Yes, Lord. And I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're watching me from, but somebody ought to thank God for shut doors. Would you tell somebody, declare it for yourself. He shut the door to open up a new one for me. Yes. He shut the door. Because something better is coming my way. They shut them out. Mm. You can't come in this whole day. We don't have room for you uh, in this end. But God mm, has opened a door. Can I tell you that when man closes a door, God opens up another door. To God be the glory for the doors he opens and for the ways that he has made. And how many of you are believing God for an open door? Yes, Lord. Y'all are here at that point. And I said, is there anybody who's believing God for an open door? Oh, how I thank him for open doors that no man can shut. And doors that God shuts. No man, yes, can open. God will open a door for you. And you don't have to live with fear of somebody shutting the door that God has opened. He says in Revelation chapter 3, I have set before you an open door. Can you receive that for yourself? That God has set before you in this coming year. Y'all missed the prophecy. He has said it. It's firm. It's unmovable. It's unbreakable. It's anchored. Yes, it is set before you. An open door. Don't be afraid of the gifts that are coming your way. It is true that wherever God dies, He will provide. Hallelujah. Uh, I wish I had some. He will provide people in the house on the day. Is there any? He will provide people who's watching on today. Is there anybody in here who don't mind jumping up and shouting? I know the Lord will make a way somehow. You made a way when our backs were up against the wall and it looked as if it was all over. You made a way and we're standing here today only because uh, you made a way. Don't know how. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> I'm not mine. Woo! He keeps on doing great things for me. Somebody look up ahead and say, I thank you for making a way for me. You made a way. And 
So I also need to make us aware of the fear. You see it. The fear of providence. Simply God's guidance. Mm. The fear of is God with me? If I say yes to the things that are coming, if I embrace the thing that I was actually terrified of, I could do it better if I knew for sure that God was going to be with me. The storms can break out. The lightning can flash. And I still will not sink. As long as I understand that you hmm, yes. are with me. Yes. And so maybe I should understand that Christmas looks better in retrospect than it does in reality. And maybe life looks better when you look back at it than it does while you're going through it. And maybe there's somebody here or somebody connected who's rejoicing about something that you used to cry about. Yes, Lord. And maybe I found somebody in retrospect that God calibrates the issues of life. Maybe when we look back at it, and say, you know what? It was good for me that I was afflicted. Because if I didn't go through that, oh God, if I hadn't faced that, if I hadn't endured that, if I hadn't lost the job, if I had not been rejected, if I had not been ostracized, I would not have found the door that God has in store for me. As a matter of fact, I thank you for hating me. I thank you for leaving me. I thank you for rejecting me. Thank you for disappointing me. Thank you for shutting the door and telling me what I couldn't do. Thank you. If you wouldn't have done that. I would have never gotten a chance to spend the night in a barn. Serenaded by the angels. Illuminated by the stars. And behold the wondrous splendor of God's provision. Which often takes away from normal places because where God is going to bless you may be outside of the box that society tries to keep you in in a place that you've never thought a blessing would be mm. oh glory God is going to bless you in an unlikely place don't be afraid when God bypasses the hotel and takes you to the barn. Because God has a way of turning a barn into a penthouse. And, and, and I need to tell somebody that God is up to something. Yes, Lord. In every barn, in every manger, with the mooing of every cow, in the midst of the goats and the lamb, God is up to something. Because anytime God takes a holy thing and puts it in a mundane thing, God is up to something. 
I'm doing the best I can. And anytime God promises you a blessing, and instead of you rising, it seems like you're going down. God is up to something. And anytime God takes you outside of the system, God is up to something. God shake whatever needs to be shaken. Lord, I'm available to you. I trust you. I open this gift by faith. God is up to something. Take a look inside. Don't be afraid. Joseph, fear not. Calm down, Joseph. I'm in the text. You're so troubled that you're worried in your sleep. And I had to speak to you in your dreams. Because when you are awake, you're so worried and you're not listening to me. And so I invade the only space left to speak to you. And when you finally give up on your thoughts long enough to hear my thoughts, I spoke to you in the night because you're not listening to me in the light. Don't be afraid, Joseph. Somebody declare it out loud. Fear not. The Lord is with you. And I've got to go to my seat, but Verse number 20, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Take to you, Mary, your wife. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And what the angel is saying, stop worrying about how things are going to turn out. Because whatever God starts. He will. He will finish it. Yes, Lord. I hope somebody's hearing because you see that which is in Mary. You did start it. And if you did start it, oh God, to everyone who's intimidated or afraid about your challenges, as long as you didn't start it. You don't have to worry about how to finish it. Be confident of this very thing. Oh my. That he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. I feel like shouting. And I need to tell somebody it is going to be alright. Okay. That's the only thing you need to know. I said it is going yes Lord to be alright. Because God is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. And if God starts it, he will finish it. Somebody throw your hands up and shout, finish it, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, my. And so the text teaches us that after Joseph woke up, he walked with Mary Never consummating the marriage and taking the journey with Mary, the woman that he loved, but he didn't touch. So what God is telling us, don't touch. Things 
while come on eels working on it. And we God eels working on it. Be still and let God be God. We God eels working it out. Don't worry about it. Don't fall out over it. Don't you touch it. Because God is not finished with it yet. Don't touch it. It's still under construction. Don't touch it. It's still in the developing stage. Don't touch it. Don't put your hand on me. Because I'm on my way up. And I can feel a change and a breaking of me. Lean over and tell somebody, don't touch me. God doesn't wait on people to reject you. To have a place already prepared. He already had a manger in place. While man was shutting doors, God already had a place set, set up for you. And I, I, I want to tell somebody that you are in that place where miracles still happen. I said, you are in that place where no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. You are in that place. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against it you are in that place because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the only reason you're still here today is because you found the place where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary be at rest. And all of the saints of the ages will sit at his feet and be blessed. Somebody open up your mouth and praise our God. Incredible. It's incredible gift. I said, open up your mouth. Don't be afraid of God's gift. Everyone stand up, we have to go. God bless you, we have to leave. I'm not talking about job talk. Don't be afraid of God.